1968 Ford Falcon. It has about 126,000 miles on it. And it runs most of the time. Today isn't one of those times. My parents bought this new in 1968. And uh, one of the reasons I've kept it is, is because it's the year that Mary Beth and I were married. And we try to take it out every year on our anniversary. Let's see if that does any, makes any difference. Okay. Just like the old days. Welcome to our country home. I was blessed to receive from my parents many things. One of them was this last car that they had, 1968 uh, Ford Falcon. But more than that, I received from them a number of values. My parents were farmers and I learned from them the importance of planning and implementation. I also learned the joy of gardening and growing things. Another thing that I learned from my parents was the joy of raising things, cooperating with God. Come, let me show you uh, the orchard that God has blessed us with and some amazing little miracles that we'll find down there. We've discovered that having an orchard requires four Ps. There's pruning, which we would love to have you help with in spring. There's the pollination, which we'll talk about. Then there's picking and preserving. Here's the pollination aspect of it. Mason bees. We call this our Mason Bee Mansion. And it's comprised of assisted living units to help the bees be more productive and more effective. If we didn't have these assisted living units for Mason Bees, they would be finding places in trees where woodpeckers had made holes or Maybe carpenter bees had drilled holes and they would use those existing holes. You would find even if you stand around long enough, they might check out your ears or your nostrils to see if they can find a place to possibly nest. Here you'll see one of the configurations used to assist the bees. A simple paper straw slid into a protective cardboard sleeve and then placed into these PVC pipes. Here's another one, wood channels routed in wood. The bees use either one so that they don't have to spend as much time finding and using less suitable holes in nature. These mason bees hatched out of tubes similar to this this spring. Males hatch first, they wait around, mate with the females, then they die, and then guys get this, the females go to work. They go out and gather pollen and nectar, take it into these paper straws or one of these wood channels, place some in there, lay an egg, move out about five eighths of an inch, build a mud wall, hence their name mason bees. They're also known as the uh, Blue Orchard Bees, their scientific name is Osmias lignaria, and that's the name for the mason bees found in the Pacific Northwest as well as British Columbia. The bees will repeat that process until they get all the way to the end of the channel or the straw, and they'll plug the end with a final plug, and then if the season is still going, they will continue starting a new hole. Do they sting? The females have stingers, but they're non-aggressive. They'll only sting if you take one and pinch it, and then it's a very mild sting. A bee just backed into that uh, tube there to lay an egg. That process is done. Now she's going to be going to get some mud to create that cell and then keep moving to the end of the, of the straw. Mason bees are tremendous pollinators. It's been said that they pollinate about 80 times more effectively than honeybees do. And the reason is honeybees are very fastidious. They collect pollen, put it on their leg sacs and carry it back to the hive. These guys enjoy life. I shouldn't say guys, they're really gals. They find a flower and they literally flop into it and dash around, thus knocking pollen off the anther, getting it all over the place, move on to another flower. Their main purpose is to pollinate. This is all that will last through the winter is these little plugged channels or these straws. Inside, the eggs will hatch, turn into a larva. The larva grows, spins a cocoon. That cocoon will be all complete by October. It stays there until spring, until late March, and then this cycle begins again. Another example of God's plan for one little aspect of the created universe. This reminds me in a very real way that God had a plan. In the beginning, God created. This is one part that he created. Here's what I call a brood chamber. And I've taken out some of the cocoons early in spring, put them in this little box so they could, when they hatch, not have to fight their way or wait to get out if there were bees in line ahead of them. All that's left behind is an empty shell. Hopefully when we leave this earth, we'll leave more than an empty shell behind, and we can and will. If we accept his plan, we will live everlastingly. Because the mason bees did their part in pollinating, 
and I did my part in preserving, we are now blessed because it's all part of God's created plan. Mary Beth and I continue to plan, and it won't be very long until the pollinators will be down here working on these tomato plants. As you do your estate planning, you may want to consider advanced directives, durable powers of attorney, a will and or a trust, and uh, people who can manage things for you when you're not able to manage things for yourself. I would invite and encourage you to do what my parents did, to do what Mary Beth and I did. And that is to contact your local plan giving and trust services department to see how they might help you with your estate planning needs.